New Zealand is sending C-130 Hercules aircraft with a team of 50 Defence Force personnel, reported by Anna White, senior digital political producer at for 26 p.m. New Zealand for 26 p.m. New Zealand time. New Zealand is sending a C-130 Hercules aircraft with a team of 50 Defence Force personnel to Europe to assist Ukraine as the war with Russia continues. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern called it a significant effort in the contribution to Ukraine. New Zealand has been asked to respond alongside our partners. At no point will they enter Ukraine nor have they been asked to, Ardern said. New Zealand will also give an extra $13 million to the effort, which includes $7.5 million going towards weapons and ammunition procurement in the UK. It brings New Zealand's total contribution to $30 million so far. Over the next two months, our C-130 will join a chain of military aircraft from partner nations, traveling throughout Europe carrying much-needed equipment and supplies to key distribution centers. Ardern said, Another eight New Zealand Defence Force staff will be sent to Germany for a logistics role helping with moving equipment and people to the border with Ukraine. Our support is to assist the Ukraine army to repel a brutal Russian invasion because peace in the region of Europe is essential for global stability. Ardern said, such a blatant attack on a country's sovereignty is a threat to all of us and that's why we'd have a role to play. Last week all MPs, Governor General Cindy Kiro, New Zealand spy chiefs and defense force figures were added to a Russian blacklist, were banned from entering Russia. Russian forces rally for a major assault on the embattled nation's eastern region. In a significant move, around 50 Kiwi military personnel will be deployed and a Hercules C-130 aircraft in a logistics role based in Germany. They'll depart on Wednesday. Our troops will be involved in planning and managing transport and ferrying much-needed military equipment and people to Ukraine's borders. We're also giving $7.5 million to pay for weapons and ammunition procured by the UK. Here's political editor Jessica Much Mackay with details and reaction. These Ukrainian army reserves are preparing to fight. During World War II, the biggest tank battle happened here, and I think history will repeat itself. There will be a lot of troops here. It will be a fight. Now, for the first time in decades, New Zealand will be sending troops to Europe. 58 will leave on Wednesday in an Air Force Hercules. This is a conflict at great distance to New Zealand, but still of significance to New Zealand. What is happening in Ukraine has an impact on the entire world. The Kiwis will help with logistics at the border. They won't go into Ukraine. The extra money announced today includes $7.5 million to help the UK pay for military equipment. How does it sit with you sending troops off to Europe? Uh, this sits squarely with New Zealand's values. Here we have a clear breach of the international rules-based order. We have a country's territor territorial sovereignty being challenged. We have a war which everyone can see. There is evidence around war crimes and impact on civilians. Last week, Australia sent 20 Bushmaster armoured vehicles, and it's delivering 70,000 tonnes of coal. Some experts question whether New Zealand is pulling its weight. I would have liked, personally, um, a more a greater emphasis on the military weapons component because I think it would symbolise our solidarity. The former Defence and Foreign Affairs Minister says it keeps us away from the front line. It's good quality contributions that we're making. Sanctions could hurry up a little bit, but uh, this is a very big step today. In terms of the military aid, it is disappointing uh, that New Zealand's government is focused more on the military side of things at the moment, which won't actually have the same impact in terms of saving lives.
These Ukrainians are calling for more weapons as they try and fix this abandoned Russian tank. Ancient or not ancient, the main thing is it works. Jacinda Ardern has ruled out sending Javelin missiles, saying we don't have enough to make a difference. About five minutes of contribution to the war. Our contribution to that war has just stepped up. And political editor Jessica Much Mackay is with us now. Jess, is this a change in position for the government? It's a change of gear for the government. Until now, we have contributed aid, we've put sanctions in place, and we've also chipped in with non-lethal military equipment like helmets and also body armour. So these putting troops on the ground is definitely a change in stance. Now, when the Defence Force personnel get over to Europe, they will be taking the lead from the UK. And what's significant today is that $7.5 million contribution. It'll go into the pot of money that the UK use to buy weapons. We haven't done that before. It is a switch and that is a change in position. What else is the money being spent on? So $13 million has been announced. That's new spending today. $4 million of that will go on satellite information that'll go to Ukrainian intelligence agencies, and that'll help them find out where the Russian troops are. We'll also make a small contribution to the legal costs for the international courts to try and hold Russia to account for some of these accusations around human rights issues. One of the other things that's worth noting is we are sending over that Hercules. We purchased those in the 1960s. They're old, they can break down. And so we are sending 20 maintenance people across as well to help with that contribution. Now, all of the personnel will leave on Wednesday. They'll take several days with several stops to get up to Europe and they'll be ready to go and operational on Monday next week. Tēnā Jess, thank you for that. Political editor Jessica Much Mackay. Kira koutou katoa. Good afternoon. Today I am here with our Minister of Defence, Penny Henare, announcing that New Zealand will be making a significant contribution to the global effort to support Ukraine against Russia's invasion. The needs of Ukraine remain broad, urgent and are changing rapidly. The global response to this violent breach of international law will not stop until Russia stops. And as such, countries around the world have pledged an unprecedented amount of military support particularly with the emerging evidence of war crimes and the mounting civilian death toll. The enormous quantities of military support that countries are contributing has made distribution difficult and there is now a growing need for transportation, logistical support and people power to deliver to Ukraine's military and citizens what is so urgently needed. This is a problem that needs to be resolved quickly and New Zealand has been asked to respond alongside our partners. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will deploy to Europe a New Zealand Defence Force C-130 Hercules aircraft supported by a team of 50 Defence Force personnel to assist with the transportation and distribution of donated military aid to Ukraine. An international donor coordination centre has been set up in Germany to coordinate the flow of military aid to Ukraine. Over the next two months, our C-130 will join a chain of military aircraft from partner nations, travelling throughout Europe carrying much needed equipment and supplies to key distribution centres. But at no point will they enter Ukraine, nor have they been asked to. The C-130 will depart for Europe on Wednesday. Additionally, the New Zealand Defence Force will deploy an eight-person team of logistics specialists based in Germany and travelling around Europe to help coordinate the flow of aid and supplies to Ukraine. They will work alongside close partners across Europe for the next three months to keep these essential items moving through the military logistics networks. This deployment is in addition to the nine intelligence personnel who are already in the United Kingdom and Belgium supporting our partners in intelligence and engagement work. Further to this deployment, Cabinet has decided today that New Zealand will contribute an extra $13 million towards military, legal and human rights support, including $7.5 million to contribute to weapons and ammunition procurement via the United Kingdom. This will allow the UK, as a trusted partner, to procure the right weapons and ammunition for the armed forces of Ukraine. 
and ensures they have what they need when they need it, given the constantly shifting nature of this war. It also directly responds to a request from Ukraine for us to coordinate our support with the United Kingdom. 4.1 million to support commercial satellite access for the Ukrainian defence intelligence. This will provide near real-time updates to Ukrainian officials to help them understand and respond to Russia's actions on the battlefield. $1 million to the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights to support the ongoing monitoring of and accountability for human rights violations being perpetrated by Russia. $500,000 for the International Court of Justice and International Criminal Court to support the case against Russia in relation to the situation in Ukraine. This is in addition to the $315,000 we committed last month and sits alongside our call as one of 41 states that a case be heard by the International Criminal Court. This contribution is not one the government has taken lightly. Each contribution we have made to date has been based on the question, in a war that New Zealand stands so strongly against, what is the most meaningful contribution we can make? While today's announcement includes procurement that will directly support the Ukraine army, so too did our existing contribution of intelligence analysts and protective equipment for the army. Our aid in all its forms is to assist the Ukraine army to repel a brutal Russian invasion. Peace in the region of Europe is essential for global stability. New Zealand is not immune to its impacts, so we do need to make sure we play our role in its resolution. Ultimately, New Zealand will keep looking at the ways we can make the greatest difference, which is in the skills we can send, the logistics we can provide, and intelligence. Our support to date has been comprehensive and covers every aspect of this conflict, humanitarian, legal, military, transportation, and people, and is in addition to the economic and trade sanctions we put in place to help grind the Russian economy to a halt as a way to end this war. We will continue to answer the calls of Ukraine with regular reviews of how we can keep making the greatest difference from here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'll now hand over to Minister Hirare, Hinare, and of course the Chief of Defence is also here to answer questions you may have. Minister Hinare. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, today's announcements are a substantial contribution to the efforts of the international community in responding to Russia's unprovoked, illegal and unjustified invasion of Ukraine. The decision to deploy a C-130 Hercules aircraft with a dedicated team of 50 personnel, as well as eight logistics specialists, is a very significant one. These deployments will provide a real contribution to Ukraine's defence and are complementary to the efforts of our international partners. The Hercules will be based in Europe and will transport donated military aid destined for Ukraine via third country locations in Europe. Our people will be working alongside the armed forces of other countries. This deployment is in addition to the already pledged support announced over the past few weeks. Just to recap so far, we have authorised the deployment of nine NZDF personnel to Europe to support our partners in intelligence work over the next three months, provided surplus tactical NZDF equipment, contributed $5 million to the NATO Trust Fund, which provides fuel, military rations, communications and military first aid kits to support Ukraine. We are actively listening to Ukraine and our partners about how we can best support the people of Ukraine. As the Prime Minister has already outlined, New Zealand has moved at pace to provide significant support as the situation continues to evolve. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Minister Hinade. We're now happy to take questions.